This book is called There's a Sea in My Bedroom and it's written by Margaret Wilde and illustrated by Jane Tanner. There's a sea in my bedroom. David was frightened of the sea. It was a huge, wet monster that gobbled him up, knocked him over, turned him upside down. He didn't like the sea, not at all, not one bit. But he liked collecting shells. He had fan-shaped ones, some that looked like trumpets and some that looked like curved animal's teeth. They were yellow and grey and pink and purple. Then one day he found a conch shell. It was shaped like a pear, brown on the outside and orange inside. That's a very special shell, said his father. If you put it against your ear, you can hear the sea inside. How could the big scary sea get inside a small shell, wondered David. But he pressed the shell against his ear and listened and listened. Then he heard the sea. It was soft and growly and friendly. David wasn't scared of this sea. Not at all. Not one bit. He took the shell to his bedroom and put it on the chair next to his bed. He felt sorry for the sea. It couldn't enjoy being trapped inside the shell. Perhaps he could let it out just for a short while. It was such a friendly sea, all soft and growly. He stroked the shell and whispered, Come out, sea, come out. I won't hurt you. He waited and waited. Nothing happened. Then he heard a swish swishing noise and the sea rushed out of the shell. It curled around his toes, foamed up his legs and beat gently against the bed. David was getting wet, but he didn't mind. Not at all, not one bit. He flopped down in the water and kicked his legs and splashed. He rode in his toy box, floated on his back and did somersaults. One, two, three. All around his room, the toys bobbed in the water his red tugboat, his yellow wooden duck and his blue striped seaplane. He scooped handfuls of foam. The bubbles disappeared quickly in his hand. He laughed and laughed and laughed. His mother and father heard him and called, What are you doing, David? What are you up to? David jumped into the waves, then came up for air and shouted, Mum! Dad, there's a sea in my bedroom. I'm jumping in the waves. I'm getting all wet. A sea in his bedroom, said his father. A sea in his bedroom, said his mother. What is he doing? They opened the bedroom door and peeped in. There was David swimming on the floor with all his toys around him. But there was no sea. No sea at all. David sat up. He touched his trousers and shirt and his hair. He was dry. There was a sea, he said. There was. A soft, growly, friendly sea. It lives inside the shell. It's gone back now. His father smiled. It's not a real sea, he said. It's just a noise the shell makes when you put it against your ear. But David knew there had been a sea in his bedroom. There was even a small pile of sand underneath his chair. Look there, he said, look there. I'm going to keep it always. I'm going to put the sand into a jar. Shall we go to the beach tomorrow, asked his father. You can go swimming in the sea. Yes, said David, that would be fun. He would take his kickboard, his snorkel and his bucket and spade. He wasn't frightened of the big sea anymore. Not at all. Not one bit. And that's the end of the story.